On January 1, 1925, we made the discovery of the universe. It happened when Edwin Hubble's research revealed that there are other galaxies in the cosmos besides the Milky Way. This discovery laid the foundation for the universe's expansion and eventual Big Bang. But Hubble found a pattern while studying the far-off galaxies. He observed that the recessional velocity of a galaxy is inversely proportionate to its distance. This implies that galaxies travel away from us more quickly the distant they are from us. Hubble's law is the name of this rule. Although this relationship seems straightforward, it contains one of the biggest mysteries in the cosmos. The Hubble constant is the quantity that compares the two sides. But why are cosmologists so dependent on this constant? What conclusions can we draw from carefully measuring it? Finally, and most importantly, how have recent Hubble Space Telescope observations demonstrated that our current understanding of the universe is seriously flawed? Researchers have attempted to cap the Hubble constant's value throughout time. However, rather than reducing confusion, the findings always added to it, creating a cosmology crisis. But first, let's try to comprehend what the Hubble constant physically means before moving on to this crisis. The recessional velocity of a galaxy and its distance can be directly correlated thanks to the Hubble constant. Therefore, it would be obvious that the Hubble constant has units of kilometer per second per megaparsec if we measured this recessional velocity in terms of km slash s and took the distance between us and the galaxy in megaparsecs. A galaxy will therefore acquire an additional recessional velocity of kilometer per second for every megaparsec of its distance if the Hubble constant is kilometer per second per megaparsec. The Hubble constant, denoted by the letter H note, is a key figure in cosmology. It can be useful to examine our understanding of the universe from the Big Bang to its ultimate destiny from beginning to end. Ho's physical embodiment appears to be simple to understand. But why is it so challenging to determine the exact value of the Hubble constant if it is so simple to do? Why is it thought to be notoriously difficult to calculate? The parameters used to evaluate the same hold the key to the solution. The recessional velocity of a galaxy and its distance from us are the two variables we require to observe the Hubble constant's value. The object's cosmic redshift, which is determined by measuring the wavelength shifts of spectral lines it emits, can be used to calculate the recessional velocity. The second component, however, the distance, presents somewhat of a challenge. Observing the Cepheid variables that live inside a galaxy is one of the common methods for determining the distance to it. Like all other variable stars, Cepheids undergo a full cycle of brightness changes, going from maximum to minimum and then back to maximum. The duration of a Cepheid's variability is correlated with its luminosity. The Cepheid is more brilliant the longer the variability period. Astronomers study the Cepheids and contrast their apparent and intrinsic luminosities. The distance modulus equation can then be used to calculate their distance by measuring the discrepancy between the observed and true brightness. Since Edwin Hubble originally used these variable stars to measure the distance, Cepheid variables function similarly to standard candles in this regard. The period luminosity connection must first be calibrated with nearby Cepheid variables, whose distance can be determined using the parallax method before calculations can be made. The issue with the cosmic distance ladder, which measures cosmic distances step by step, is that the uncertainty grows with each level. Edwin Hubble calculated the Hubble constant to be 500 km per second per megaparsec, or around seven times what astronomers believe it to be now. This figure was obtained by plotting the variance between the distance and recessional velocity for 46 galaxies. Cepheids, however, are limited to measuring distances between approximately 1 kiloparsec and 50 megaparsec. What about distances beyond this range then? The behavior of galaxies up to 50 megaparsec cannot be used to determine a constant's value. 
The type want a supernovae come into play when we need to peer further in order to get precise calculations. When a white dwarf that is feeding on its companion develops uncontrolled fusion and eventually explodes into a supernova, the result is a type 1 a supernova. These supernovae explosions are ideal standard candles for calculating greater distances because of their remarkable brightness. Using these supernovae, the Hubble Shoes program, which stands for supernova, H note, for the equation of state of dark energy, has significantly improved our understanding of how fast the universe is expanding. The Hubble constant was estimated by the Shoes team to be around 74 km per second per megaparsec in 2019. The SHOES project assesses the universe's current expansion rate by taking into account galaxies that are less than 2 billion light years away. However, one must be able to confirm it with theoretical predictions in order to be certain that this value is accurate. We have to go back in time to create those. This is due to the fact that if we can determine how quickly the universe expanded just after the Big Bang, we can use that information to approximate what the Hubble constant would be in the present day scenario. A crisis materialized in front of the researchers as they were doing this. We know that the superheating of all the matter in the universe following the Big Bang unleashed massive amounts of energy. The radiations changed color as the universe became larger. It turns out that the Cosmic Microwave Background, or CMB, is quite useful in determining how much the radiation redshifted. The CMB is an irregular source of electromagnetic radiation that was once part of the early universe. As opposed to that, it is composed of hotter and colder areas that represent the clumpiness of matter and energy in the very early universe. To predict the expansion of the universe from its beginning to the present, scientists coupled basic physics with estimations of the mass and energy present in the universe. Consequently, the best measurements seem to agree on a value between 67 and 68 km per second per megaparsec using the precision attained using various methods. That obviously contradicts what the observational values indicate. According to mathematical calculations, the universe should be expanding more slowly than was determined from Hubble's observations. And this has been the biggest cosmological crisis to yet. Researchers have been working to improve the accuracy of their observational values and have recently made progress in this area. The SHOES team analyzed 42 supernovae milepost markers that are exploding at a rate of around one per year after reviewing all the data and accounting for almost 1,000 Hubble orbits. This almost complete analysis of all supernovae that have so far been visible to the Hubble Space Telescope. In the end, they arrived at a Hubble constant estimate of 73 km per second per megaparsec plus or minus one. This number exceeds the theoretical expectations of 67.5 plus or minus 0.5 km slash s slash megaparsec once more. However, the measurement is about eight times more accurate than Hubble was anticipated to be able to measure. The likelihood of the new estimate being incorrect is only one in a million considering the size of the Hubble sample this time. The new findings are anticipated to pave the way for the discovery of novel physics, even though the reason for the disparity between the predicted and observed values of the Hubble constant is still unknown. In order to calculate the distances in the universe, astronomers are always on the lookout for novel occurrences and objects. Red giant stars and neutron star mergers are two examples. Additionally, we can anticipate having sharper resolutions and even more accurate outcomes in the future as NASA's Webb Space Telescope gets going. Alright everyone here is where the video ends, thanks for watching. To ensure that you don't miss any upcoming videos, subscribe to our channel and click the bell symbol.